Um, actually, hold on. Before um, I start off with this segment, uh, we have a couple of comments that I'd like to get acknowledged. So let me go ahead and just pull that up real quick. And all right, so let's see. The first comment, again, Crucial PG, he's asked, what do I, who do I think is going to be um, in the finals this season? So like, who do you think, who do I like as the finals matchup? So that's a little bit tricky because it's, um, I don't want to decide yet until like the uh, post All-Star break, like where I see like where every team is like after that break. But as of right now, I have uh, Denver going all the way, going all the way to the finals again, and matching up against the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, and the reason for that is because, like, I just I would say the Clippers, but I just cannot say the Clippers when they have James Harden and their reputation. I just I cannot. I can't. I w would have said Oklahoma, but after their recent struggles with all of those games, I don't think they can make it far either. So. If I were to choose um, a team, I would rather choose like the team that has already proven that they can won, that they could win and can go far, than most of those other teams because like it's just a tendency that all of them have had, and it's like it's something that I just cannot ignore. Like for example, Boston. If I were to pick Boston, Boston also has a reputation of um, not being able to perform when the lights shine the brightest. So. I don't necessarily want to pick them because it's like they could do that again. Same thing applies with Philly. And the same thing also applies with um unfortunately like in my opinion I believe like the the Knicks are the team are a team that's just going to end up losing in the end because that's just it's just how it is and it's like it's some it's not something that's like it's not something that can necessarily be explained. It's just something that it is. It's the same way with how like people say that Doc Rivers is a bad coach simply because of his like adjustments and the fact that he's blown all of these playoff series leads. So it's like it, it just is. And I can't get over that superstition until I see some differences coming like close into the postseason. And now we have. Um, yes, but I think Bucks over. I think Bucks over Celtics. Yes, I I think um, like right now they're not they're not playing well and they're they're second seed. So they're not playing well in the, the second seed by a wide margin in the Eastern Conference. So after All-Star break, like, imagine when they figure it out. Like, I think they could cause a serious problem. And Giannis in the postseason, he absolutely scares me. Like, he, he scares me. I, I'm terrified of that man. I saw that man destroy my Brooklyn Nets. Please, no thank you. Um, and he also has another question that I'll acknowledge um, in the next segment because I actually have to talk about this segment about Darvin Ham being on the hot seat. But these are good questions, so um, I don't I don't mind uh, you asking them. So please keep going ahead. Um, the the Lakers uh, lost in a blowout to Houston yet again, one thirty five to one nineteen. Like I've said many times before, LeBron and Anthony Davis and D'Angelo Russell they look like the only players on the Lakers that came to play. D'Angelo Russell, after ever since that trade rumor, he's really turned it around, and he's showed that he does not want to be traded. It's insane, like how he had that. He flipped that switch. It's insane. So why didn't he have it on the whole time? No one knows. As usual, the rest of the Lakers and the bench and the substitutions rotations were mostly terrible, except for Roy Hachimura, who got only 22 minutes that night and ended with 16-5 on four of five. Why isn't he getting more minutes? Why is Christian Wood ever in the game? Why is Prince ever in the game when you have someone like Roy Hachimura who can take some of those minutes? Like, Darvin Ham loads those guys, Chris, um, Torn Prince, with like 30 minutes a game. You can spare some of those minutes to Roy. And Prince is, um, he's had a lot of games that I've watched him where he doesn't, I don't see him really do anything that like impacts the team in a big way. Reefs hasn't been good recently either. He's been a little bit inefficient. Um, this team needs a trade, and they need to do it quickly. LeBron was um, on the bench, and he looked sicked at uh, the rest of the bench. He looked disgusted. Jalen Green ended with 34. Sangoon ended with 31. Sangoon has been a really good rookie this season. It's unfortunate uh, that Victor had to be in the same draft as him. He's great to watch. Uh, but more on the Lakers. The substitutions, they're so bad. It's not even funny. Like, the lineup clearly doesn't work, but Darvin Ham continues to do the exact same thing over and over and over again and just praying that LeBron drops 30 points. In this game, a lot more players came off the bench because it was a blowout. 
So it's like he just uses his bench when there's a blowout game. It's like, why? What is because the last few games, uh, there's only been four players coming off the bench. What kind of substitutions are those? Roy wouldn't normally get to play in the game, of course. Like, he didn't log in any minutes in that last game. And the fact that Vanderbilt and P Prince play significantly more than him and can barely produce more than him, why not start Roy? Um, and I know that all these talks about the Lakers are like, um, end up being about their bench and their coach, but is there really anyone else to blame? Who are you going to blame? LeBron? I mean, you can't blame LeBron. LeBron ended with 25, 12, and 4. AD ended with 22 and 11. And D'Lo ended with 29. It wasn't his fault that they lost. What, you expect um, a 39-year-old LeBron to go all Miami and drop 40, 12, and 10 or some something like that? Some ridiculous stat line? No. He's old. Like, you, that shouldn't really... It, he's great, but it shouldn't really be expected of him with this age to do it consistently he needs that help and like he's always needed that help to like to be able to like um and he's just never gotten there he's never gotten that help and i grow tired of this talk because it's like it's becoming more and more apparent that there needs to be a change in the lakers and it's just they aren't doing anything why if lebron wasn't on the team like if any other good caliber player was on that team i don't think they'd be in a much better position and the only one, the only player like I, that I could see probably taking this team like and doing a little bit better is Luca. But that's literally only because his offense reminds me a lot of LeBron, and he's younger. But even so, Darvin Ham as the coach would probably just ruin him too. Uh, I watched there was a clip um, on Twitter of LeBron giving Darvin Ham the most ridiculous side eye. It could rival his stare at Boston Celtics in Game Six. Darvin Ham was also on the sideline, just not coaching his players. There was a clip where he was just standing there. And Ime Udoku, the other coach, was um, doing all these hand gestures, telling him you need to go there, and all those adjustments that you'd expect a coach to make. But Darvin Ham was just standing there. Another clip of um, Anthony Davis in the huddle after Ham tried to draw up a play. Ham was just watching, like, and once he gets into the huddle and starts drawing up the play, Anthony Davis just gets up and he leaves. Now, clearly the rest of the team is not behind him, and they need to find a new coach and get a good trade out of that. Like, clearly there needs, there needs to be change and it has to happen now. And it's, it's difficult finding um, a coach for LeBron. Not many, not many have been notable to the point where it's a meme that LeBron literally coaches himself and he coaches the team. And honestly, like, I've been undermining the whole get a coach because, like, I've always seen LeBron do everything and tell everyone what to do on the team all the time. So it's a bit concerning, like, just how bad he's been and how many people want to see him fired. And the Lakers, honestly, they, they, they missed out on Doc. I mean, I don't personally think Doc would have been a better head coach. Well, I, no, actually, I can't even say that. I think Doc would have been a better head coach, but I don't think in the long run it would have, he would have been a better head coach because of his tendencies in the playoffs. But any head coach is, at this point seems to be better than Darvin Ham with his substitutions. It's really bad, even though Doc doesn't really have that good substitutions either. But... Who knows? A coach that um, you like and that is like you're behind in the locker room is definitely like much better than a coach that like you just you cannot stand. So getting rid of him would be would be a um, I'm assuming it would be a blessing given how they looked and how they treat him. Not to mention like um, Doc knew all about LeBron's game, needing to constantly like coach against him and a lot of matchups for so long. So I think he'd make like he'd make the right plays for LeBron and he'd be able to do them, even though, you know, LeBron does all his plays himself. And of course, playoff stock, like I mentioned before, he doesn't do anything, but will Ham do anything? I don't really think so. So it's really hard to blame anyone. It's really hard to blame anyone on the team or like other than like the bench that, um, or the, the coach that substitutes the bench in. Like the Lakers have a tendency to scapegoat a lot of their players, and I'm not trying to scapegoat um, anyone or Darvin Ham, but from what he's shown, there's not really much evidence that like that can defend him. Like, dude, it's like, no, it, it, do, it doesn't work like that. Sugun was drafted three years ago. Wow, I missed that. Oh my god, I'm terrible. I need to go. I need to go back. I need to go back to the record books. Good lord, Jesus. Um. But anyways, regardless, uh, the Lakers and scapegoating. They did this last year with Westbrook, even though like it was a long time coming, in my opinion. His struggles weren't fully recognized by mainstream media. Once it became much more mainstream, a lot of people just saw how negatively Russ could affect the team. 
uh, and he was just coming off like uh, he was just coming off greater light like in LA and um, being in a low market team it's very difficult to get that recognition when you do do bad but when you do do good you get a lot of that recognition obviously on the Clippers he doesn't face as much scrutiny because the team with like fewer clicks isn't going to get acknowledged as much unless you know it was like that one little segment where they where they lost six straight games. It's like with Kemba Walker, like when he was on the Hornets. It's a low market media and not much coverage in those games and people started to underrate Kemba. However, they started to only do that. He started to become overrated because people started to call him underrated. They would acknowledge his great games and like his good games, but they wouldn't acknowledge any of his bad games. And I feel like when you do that, like it should be it should go both ways. You shouldn't just acknowledge um, a player for being like, um, you shouldn't say he's underrated simply because you see a couple of his good games. You need to acknowledge all of the games and how the media treats all of those games because he's not getting uh, coverage for when he's playing bad. And neither are some of these other players that are on low market uh, teams like Bradley Beal when he was on Washington, CJ when he was on um, Portland. CJ arguably was the big, has been the biggest all-star snub for the longest time on Portland because he doesn't get nearly the much media attention that Dame got. But you only hear about those good games. Now, we have a lot of comments, so let's go see. Jesus Christ, there's so many PG members. Good Lord. <laughs> so another question from Crucial PG was, uh, do I think that Ben Simmons would have been good with the current Sixers? and Nick Nurse's rotations. Honestly, I I like Nick Nurse's rotations. Um, he uses he uses his bench. He uses a lot of his players that come off his bench. So I really like uh, the ro his rotations. Do I think it would have worked? No, I do not think it would have it would have worked simply because he's Ben Simmons. Like, I just don't I just don't I'm not a big fan of him. I don't think he, he doesn't have a scoring mentality, so was, I don't think he'd want to step up to that role and be that that big player and be that leading scorer or or even like be that catalyst on the bench. I don't see the motivation behind him, and I I don't see that driving force. I don't I don't think I don't think that would work out. Simply, it's literally only because of his mentality. If his mentality was different, like if he actually wanted to get better and if he wanted to improve, then yes, I could totally see that see um, him working with all of those rotations. Um, and with that, we are out of time for this second segment, um, one on the little tangent. So uh, join me for the third segment where I go ahead and recap some of the games that happened from last night. And I will see you after this short break. <laughs> 